This is Michael Fisher for SavingAndInvesting.com and I want to speak briefly about dividend policy. Now as we know, companies when they make earnings can do two things with those earnings. The earnings being the profit or the net income that appears on the balance sheet. They can pay out those earnings in the form of a dividend, which is typically a cash payment made to investors, or they re can retain the earnings, in which case they appear as equity or retained earnings on the balance sheet of the company. <clears throat> now the decision as to what a, kind of a dividend a company should pay out is one of the decisions that companies have to make in the context of their corporate finance and planning and in terms of their capital structure planning. There's a theory that was proposed by which is known as the Miller Modigliani theory um, or the capital irrelevance theory which states that how a company finances itself i.e. equity or debt and its dividend policy is irrelevant to the firm's value and given that firms exist and make decisions to maximize value for shareholders and for themselves um, it, it, the, the theory implies that dividend policy is irrelevant as, as are equity and debt financing decisions because in the end the same value is derived. Now in order to make, uh, to, to justify this theory and in order to prove this theory um, and numerous assumptions, of course, had to be made, and those include an absence of taxes, um, an absence of transaction costs, an absence of costs associated with issuing equity. So in reality, dividend policy is um, something that companies spend quite a bit of time thinking about. And generically speaking, what companies do to a large extent and how they decide their dividend policy um, is partly affected by their ability to invest because issuing new stock to raise capital does come with costs and uh, m meaning that selling stock in the market may depress the share price or also comes with selling costs and underwriting costs so if the company has growth prospects that they feel they want to reinvest in and typically companies that have higher growth these companies will re re retain a larger part of their earnings, whereas companies that are in mature industries, for example, you, the, in the utility sector, where <clears throat> it, the infrastructure, for example, in electricity or in other areas, has in some countries been to a large extent built, um, these types of companies, utilities, for example, will pay a larger part of their earnings out in dividends, and their dividend yields will be higher. The other thing that affects how a company at, takes a, a dividend policy decision is what the expectation of investors is. Now dividends contain a lot of signaling information or information with respect to the state of the company and typically investors tend to prefer for constant at least or even arguably rise slowly rising dividends. So the omission of a dividend or the cutting of a dividend or the cancellation of a dividend conveys uh, is seen by many investors to convey information about the state of the company so one of the goals of many companies is to keep the dividend somewhat constant the other thing is that because of tax considerations uh, ie that the in a company within the corporate entity within the company to get to net income um, we take the revenues we subtract a lot of costs and then taxes are one of the expenses that companies pay when a company pays a dividend, the receiver of that dividend, the recipient, who is the shareholder, um, often has to pay taxes again. And because of this double taxation of dividends, which has been a topic um, in the United States, for example, um, because of this double taxation of dividends, sometimes companies will retain more of the earnings in order to avoid the second layer of taxation. The other aspect of dividend policy that's important is that there are certain investors, types of investors, also sometimes referred to as income investors, who tend to value the presence and the payment of a dividend. So companies may position themselves by paying a dividend to appeal to income-oriented investors as opposed to, for example, growth-oriented inv investors or capital gain-driven investors um, who are clearly investing based for more of a stock price appreciation element. So with respect to dividend policy, there are numerous factors. Clearly, um, because of the cost of issuing new equity and raising new capital, companies that have requirements to reinvest and believe that they have opportunities where they can generate a lot of value on, on, by retaining the earnings and have a high return on equity
um, will retain a larger part of the earnings. Secondly, because of tax considerations, um, in many countries there's an incentive to retain earnings over paying a dividend because the dividend is then taxed a second time. Having said that, investors um, do like to have a, an income element to an investment while they're holding the shares. The proponents of the Miller-Modigliani model, um, the reason that that works not only is because of the assumptions of no taxes, no cost of issuing equity, but also because the argument is that if you're a shareholder and you own numerous shares, you can simulate an income by selling a portion of your shareholding as opposed to receiving a dividend. Um, and, and so therefore, that, that it's in that context that one can create income. Having said that, however, a lot of shareholders that own shares do like an income element to it, to their shareholding without having to sell shares. And particularly, um, if they're receiving that dividend on a tax advantage basis because of their own status or because they're uh, income driven or income more income oriented investors as a, um, who value that income aspect and the ability of that company to provide value and to create shareholder value both through a dividend income stream and through some level of capital appreciation. So the dividend policy is quite complex and often is very specific to certain seg sectors of industry. For example, the dividend policy within the certain subsectors of the technology area would perhaps be quite similar between the companies, whereas and conversely, the dividend paying policy amongst companies that were in the electrical utilities space. Um, would also, or in the telecoms area, in the incumbent telecom space, would also potentially be quite similar, partly based on investor expectation, partly based on the company's desire to retain earnings, and partly based on an industry, sort of an industry norm or an industry average that people benchmark against and that investors look at as being favorable um, in that sector.